Okay, so that would go in like this. Seems like it's in place. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So I just found this old diatone which I burnt the ESC a while ago. Now just because I burnt the ESC doesn't make this drone bad. This is diatone 2018. What happened with this one is I used it to basically try to rescue a quad from a tree and then I just burnt the ESC. First I thought it was a motor but then it's the ESC. So in this video I'm going to show you how to figure out which MOSFET is bad. Now this, this issue is a MOSFET issue. Later on I'll do some like a BB2 chip issue or some kind of other issue. But I thought this would be the perfect platform. So you can tell already, this was a really good working one. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed the chips so we can replace on the broken one. But first we need to figure out which one's broken and which one's working. Now the sign of one bad MOSFET or a failing MOSFET is your motor will do this. Now if it's not spinning, then first you kind of want to actually try to connect it to BLHeli32 BL 32 or BLHeli-S, see if it actually uh, reads, if it does then uh, it could be something from the chip down to the connection to the drivers, the MOSFETs or the, the, the MOSFET drivers. But we'll get into that later on. Currently, this is a MOSFET issue. Or at least this is what it seems like because the motor does turn on and jitter. So it, it has to be one of the phases. I'm pretty sure it's one of the phases, but we're going to figure that out today. So let's go ahead and move this guy. And uh, let's start by debugging this one and seeing what is the issue here? Let me just go ahead and fix the mic and make sure everything is perfect. So first thing you want to put our multimeter in content tuning mode. As you can tell right there when I touch it, it beeps. So what you want to do is uh, usually there's one pin that's a gate and then you get three positives and four negatives or just the opposite. But there's always a gate. So the gate is usually on one of the edges and you can check up the MOSFET, you know, the, the, the data sheet for this. So what I'm going to start with are the middle pins. So if the middle pins are bridged, then I know I have a bad MOSFET here. And something that's very important and really recommended, make sure you have this out of your quadcopter because some of the caps can just get charged. The gate might actually open. And you might think you have a bad MOSFET even though you have a good MOSFET. So make sure you make everything is discharged in here. Try to just, you know, just keep shorting it out while it's disconnected and make sure it's good because it was telling me that four of these were bad when I had it in the, uh, and I know that's not true. When I had it inside the uh, quadcopter. So let's just go ahead and zoom in. All right. So let's check this MOSFET. So theoretically, it should be at least one or two bad because it's one phase. So there we go. We have one bad one, as you can tell. I'm just testing these two. Okay, so we got one that's bad. Let's see this one. This one's good. So this one's bad. We'll put an X on it. There we go. Let's go ahead and test this guy here. Okay. Yeah, this one's bad. So we got two bad ones so far. What about this one? This one's good. Yeah, this one's good. And let's double check this one. And be careful, sometimes you might be touching a negative on the positive or something. I mean on a capacitor and or the positive and then you know you might get a little beep and you might think that you know if you're, you're holding your multimeter like this and it's like touching one of the edges of the capacitor, that could give you a false alarm so just take that into consideration. So let's go ahead and check this guy out. I think this is the last guy. Yeah. So we have, I think these two were the broken ones here. Let's just double check. Yeah, this one too. Okay, so we have these two that we need to remove. So let's start removing it. Okay, so we have two bad MOSFETs. I've already gone ahead and removed some chips from here because I'm not going to order and wait a trillion years. Plus, I'm going to replace all the ESCs on that quad anyways. So there we go. We have one. Now, I highly recommend before starting, uh, you do take a picture. So you kind of get an idea of how each chip is supposed to go in after you purchase them. So you don't get lost. So for example, 
uh, you have the dot down here and then you have the dot up here so one this one would go up like this in there and then another one probably go in backwards like like so like that so that one would go right there and this one would go right there so let's go ahead and move these guys now all right guys so what i have to do is we have to do it again because the video is corrupt and it keeps making my pc crash for some reason so i got another mosfet the same exact one and we're going to go ahead and do this together so we're just going to basically remove it and then basically put them back on and um yeah let's go ahead and do that so first things first i want to go ahead and start by adding some flux and uh, I'll leave a link to everything down below if you wanted to get the same things as me. So let's just add some flux here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my uh, rework station to around 390 degrees Celsius and um, around 50% power here. Air power, airflow. So the hot air is slowly working its magic now I recommend some of the something like this this is a silicone pad here which and it just it won't catch fire and which is actually a must to have in such you know types of situations so you don't catch anything on fire and this is very cheap I think it's like a4 size which is like a paper size and it's uh it's really good it's really thick I'll leave a link to it down below I've had it for a while the only thing is don't get white because it gets dirty like this so let's go ahead and start with this one here I'm gonna give it a little bit of a little nudge here. You want to make sure it's suspended, or else, uh, you know, while you're moving it back and forth, the components on the other side might even desolder. So it's a little bit difficult and tricky right now because I do have the uh, camera in the way. Hopefully, that's still focused there. Okay. A little bit more. Okay, so we got one here, and we have the other one there. Okay, just there we go. Now we're just gonna let the board cool down a bit. Alrighty, there we go. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of alcohol or just PCB cleaner um, just to cool down the board slightly. And to clean it up from the flux so we have a nice clean area to work with here. Okay. So something that's really recommended is take a picture before you begin. Uh, just so you know how which what's the correct orientation of the correct MOSFET of how to place it basically. Now what I've noticed here is I have these little dots. As you can tell that little dot, that means that would go here. So when I put one in, it's gonna come down just like this. Cause look at that little dot right there. And then here's that little dot right there. And if you take a look at there, you also have that dot right there. So that's a way to kind of know. And also um, <clears throat> just to have everything set up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a little bit of more flux. And I'm going to add solder with the soldering iron here. So this is flux here, what I'm adding. And uh, let me go ahead and start up the soldering station. And for the soldering iron that I'm using, I'm using the TS100 again. I've been using this lately. If you've been watching my channel, this is all I've been using. So once it breaks, I'm going to let you guys know. I've I, it's, it's been insane. And actually it dropped in price because newer ones were released, which is even better for everybody. I think I got this one, it was like 80 bucks or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of solder right there just to kind of uh, freshen that up. It's really nice to do that and make sure the tip is clean and ready. So there we go. Make sure the tip is good. The tip looks great. So what we want to do is add a little bit of solder to the tip here. Okay. It might have been a little bit too much. So it's because these are, I think these are the ground pads. The heat dissipates throughout the ESC and uh, makes it a little bit more difficult. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. We're going to add a little bit. We don't want to add too much 
And I think we've already added quite a bit too much here. You want to hit these pads also. There we go. I'm going to clean up the tip now. All the flux basically disappeared here. So, but it's going to be fine. Should be good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my soldering iron. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to place both chips. Now there's a little technique that I like to do. Sometimes you can't tell if it's, you know, the solder has melted into place. What I like to do is just push the component slightly. And if you move your hand, you can kind of see it move by itself. And uh, that means that the solder is basically melted and just correct it if it became uncorrected. So I have my dot in the corner and as I saw my dot there, or I basically kind of like I looked at my picture. So this might have a little bit extra too much solder, which would be nice. So we can see how to do it together. There we go. And you could do one component at a time, but I'm going to do two since I'm heating up the board. I, I just don't want to heat it up for too long or I don't want to wait again. So I'm going to set these guys up in the place and it looks good. It should kind of settle itself into place here in a bit. So and again, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my rework station. I'll leave a link to it down below. I found a cheap one, just a hot air gun, and I'm waiting for it to arrive. I'll leave that link as well. I left that link in a couple videos back if you wanted to check that out. So right now my hot air gun, I'm just waiting for the uh, thing to stabilize here. And we should have added a bit of flux and I kind of forgot, or did I? No, I didn't actually. So yeah, so that's a big no-no. So let's put this down. Flux is very, very important. So let's put a little bit of flux here. Or a lot of bit of flux. Let's put as much as possible. Just make sure you clean this stuff. It gets really nasty. All right. So let's go ahead and set these guys up. Okay, so that should be like so. Okay. And this one should be like this. There we go. So make sure it's suspended in the air because I've had an ESC completely disintegrate while I'm trying you know, to move it, move the MOSFET off. And actually the bottom of the board was on a table and just everything just came off of the other side. So let's go ahead and grab the hot air gun now. Okay, I'm waiting for it to stabilize. Okay, stabilize, just give it a little tiny bit. All right, we'll start from outside, just to allow the board to heat up a little. There we go. See, as you can tell, the solder started to melt here, but it's pushing backwards. Oh, that's 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 our fault here. It's because this was not leveled. And I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I guess we'll just do one MOSFET at a time. There we go. So I'm take its position. Very nice. Okay, beautiful. That one's done. Just make sure we have. Okay, so that would go in like this. Seems like it's in place. Everything looks good. All right. So that was. I would consider a good job. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and test this out. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit of alcohol or PCB cleaner. There we go. Just clean that off, make it look nice and new. Theoretically, or realistically, everything looks perfect here. So <clears throat> what you also want to double check is if you move components out of the way. And if you see like with small resistors next to the MOSFETs and stuff, then um, this thing's really hot. So I just really want to kind of get an idea here. So it had a sticker back here, so that melted. It had a QC sticker on the back. Okay. 
All right, guys, so that's how you go ahead and repair a MOSFET. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck is this? Well, there's a couple things that happened to me, actually, before I started. One is I did not have the ESC suspended. I had it just stayed on the floor, and while I was heating it up, one of the MOSFETs would just would not come off. It, it still wouldn't come off. And what I was doing is I was pulling the MOSFET, you know, just like this, and everything on the board came off except that MOSFET. <laughs> so, yeah, it could give me pretty chicken. If it doesn't want to come off, it's, if it's taking too long, then just stop. And maybe get your soldering iron and some solder wick and try to take off the uh, solder and see if that removes it. I think that one melted into the board or something was wrong with it. It was actually the other one. So yeah, while I was trying to remove it, I was pushing the board like this because also it was not suspended. And this is what happened to that ESC. So if you want to take a look here. It's basically a little pu puzzle piece now. It's really nice because we can also practice and try to hit these guys. Uh, where is that little one? Here it is. I think this is the driver for the for the um, MOSFETs, possibly. As you can tell, how it's set up in there. So that'll be pretty interesting to install that there. Uh, that'll be pretty fun. So this is a working ESC, by the way. We can try to put every single component back in, but it's going to be difficult to figure out some of the smallest resistors here. Maybe they're just lost somewhere. But overall, uh, this is just the first stepping stone into the series, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know. What do you guys think? Any suggestions of the way I'm recording? Any kind of way you want to see it in a different way? Let me know. This is new to me, this kind of recording here. I'm still trying to get it down, but hopefully it was useful. And if you guys do like this content, please leave a like. And you could also support the channel via Patreon. That would be super awesome. A dollar or two a month would go an absolute long way. And you could also use the links down below. Those greatly support the channel. Uh, you don't even have to purchase the same thing. If you just click it, make a purchase, anything. It'll give me a couple cents to keep the channel going. And I do appreciate everything, guys, and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.